Yo, yo, what is going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. So we're going to go over Sunday's games. Now, the Eagles have not played yet, so whether you're watching this before the game on Monday night or you're watching this um, after the game, if the Eagles win or lose, regardless, we're going over Sunday. We're going over everything, and really, if the Eagles win against Kansas City, they'll be, you know, they'll be in a nice lead in the NFC and good for, obviously, the number one seed and still in motion. Get this gauntlet of teams, you know, just keep winning, and that's all that matters. If the Eagles lose, I think they're, what, only a game ahead in the NFC East and I think um what a half game in the in the conference something like that if I'm wrong let me know I I just kind of figured it out really really quick or tried to um but go over all the games on Sunday how it affects the Eagles for number one seed the division all that great stuff and then there is a specific player the Eagles let go of or not really let go of you're gonna find out about this one this one is kind of juicy because man the Eagles tried looking for this position this past week and now um, another player is that especially was going to leave the league is now back and signing with a team. And we're going to go over that as well. So let's get into it. Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. Yo, what is going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. Hope everybody is enjoying their Monday. Um, a lot to go over. Um, we're going to be going over all of the games, or at least the important ones that are, that are kind of going towards the Eagles right now and, and what's been going on, uh, whether it's number one seed division, stuff like that. And number one, I want to go over the Cowboys-Panthers uh, game. Okay, Cow the, the Panthers only have only one, have won one game this year. Um, now the Cowboys are 7-3, and three, um, and at this point, the Eagles are a step ahead. But um, these were two weeks where the Eagles were on the bye week, and the Cowboys um, were able to beat the Giants and the Panthers, and I had that happening regardless. I mean, I didn't think the Panthers really had a chance. Um, they just looked god-awful, and yet the Cowboys look very good on beating up and patting the stats on bad teams this year, and it's been happening non friggin stop I mean really talk about it when it's teams over 500 um uh, you know two the two losses against Arizona and the 49ers man i mean they've only averaged 16 and a half points uh in those two games i mean they even score over 10 points on the 49ers 0 and 2 uh, when it comes to decent teams at least um and then you know they are 6 and 1 when it comes to teams under 500 so pretty much the bad teams are averaging 33.7 points um we kind of already knew that this I mean Dak Prescott has 180 something yards passing it's just one of those games where like they offense barely had to do much of anything um you know Micah Parsons had two and a half sacks so he won't be bitching on his podcast about you know what you know long as they won who cares you know he's got nothing to complain about this week um CeeDee Lamb had like 35 yards I mean, Deron Bland looks, you know, uh, the Cowboy fans have Deron Bland looking like Deion, uh, Deion Sanders. I mean, it, it's just crazy right now. The hype is real. The Cowboys are back. They won two straight games, rocking and loaded. Um, and, uh, you know, the, they've been scoring a lot of points. They are unstoppable. I mean, that's what we're supposed to say when we're talking about them and what they have done so far this season. The stats are stats. I only bring up the stats because the Cowboy fans bring up the stats to me and want to prove me wrong. But this is just so criminal. This is so shady. This is just, when I see, like, how are you supposed to survive a playoff game like this? To play like this? It's just, it's just crazy. And this is going to be the part where they get, where the Cowboys get into the playoffs and then they put it on Dak's shoulders. And then when trailing against teams, he is dead last in the league, dead last, the last quarterback in the league when trailing, okay, has no differential when it comes to getting his team ahead. Okay. And they say, oh, we always have a lead. What are you talking about? You know, it doesn't that doesn't matter, man, because they're, you have to show adversity when it comes to uh, games. And the two times they dealt with adversity, they couldn't come back from it. You know what I mean? They couldn't come back from it. And obviously, you know, they lost to the Eagles. Uh, they, they lost to the Eagles. Well, technically the Eagles. So the Eagles and 49ers were over 500. They lost to the Cardinals, uh, which they, don't, they only got their second win at this point. So, 
you know, I had them winning this game. A win is a win at the end of the day. The Cowboys get another win in the win column, and, you know, they keep riding the storm. And sooner or later, you know, the Cowboys got some teams to face. They have a stretch of teams. As much as the Eagles have a stretch of teams to face, the Cowboys do as well. They still got to face Seattle. They still got to face uh, Detroit. They still got to face, um, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles again. Um, you know, so they, they have a string of, uh, of teams that, uh, they're going to be going against and, you know, they have to play Miami as well. They still haven't played Miami. So, um, both teams are dealing with that, uh, you know, a little bit of a gauntlet right now. And, and the Cowboys will be running into that schedule, uh, really soon, uh, coming down the line. So it should be really interesting, but the Cowboys get a good win here. Now, going to the Giants and the Washington Commanders, man, I didn't expect the Giants and Tommy DeVito to do what they did to the Commanders. I mean, somebody's got to get fired on Washington, right? I mean, that was just pitiful. I mean, I don't care if you don't have Montez Sweat or Chase Young. I mean, that offense that's over there should be good enough. I mean, I mean, seriously, man, it's just, I mean, the turnovers back and forth, so many fumbles, so many mistakes. I mean, it was just such a back and forth game because there were so many little turnovers at some points of, of this game. Just crazy. Um, DeVito looked good. I mean, three touchdowns. I don't know what his statistics were other than that, but I mean, he had three touchdowns on the day. Sam Howe threw, I think, a pick or two. I know I, I tried watching the entire game. I looked at some of the highlights and stuff. Um but it, it looked horrible. I mean, does does Rivera have to get fired at this point? I mean, it's crazy to say, guys, but the commanders are still in the hunt for a wild card spot. And you have to watch out for the Giants and watch out for a team like the commanders because these are teams. OK, the teams in the hunt, especially that will surprise other teams. They have nothing to lose at this point. OK, they have nothing to lose. The most dangerous team is a team that has nothing to lose. And that's what could mess up a good team that everyone's going to say, oh, they're going to kill the Giants. They're going to. And then they come back with this win like this. You know, you get beat by a team like this. Why, you know, uh, the Cowboys still have to face Washington next week. Um, so that's another matchup. I'm kind of interested to see how pissed off Washington is going to be. Um, you know, I think at this point, he's the, I think Sam Howell's the most sacked quarterback still in the league right now. And the Giants are pretty much their season is done. It's been done. I mean, they're not coming back from anything, but the score 31 points on Washington. I was not expecting that result at all, like whatsoever. Well, what's going on? Why do the Giants have the Washington commander's number? Like, why do they always have Washington's number? Why does Washington play so well against the Eagles? And like, they play so damn close. I don't get it. Cow uh, the Giants own the Commanders and the Commanders. I mean, we own I mean, the Eagles own the Commanders, but man, we get out of some crazy close games with them. Um, so I was very surprised and actually very disappointed in Washington for not winning this game. I mean, they clearly just have they're just better. I mean, did they overlook the Giants this week or maybe they're just starting to give up on the season? Are they losing the locker room? Is Rivera actually losing this locker room right now? That's the question going forward. So. That was the Giants Washington game. That was a uh, that was a, that was a very interesting one there. Now regarding to the number one seed, man, the all the, dude, all the Bears had to do was hold off and be the the Bears played conservative in the fourth quarter. They were up by what 12, 14 points. They had three and a half minutes left, and the Lions came back and won this damn game. I mean, seriously, dude. I mean. This is a team that the Eagles have to watch out for because they are coming for that number one seed. And that Lions schedule is really good. It's easier than the Cowboys schedule. It's easier than the Eagles schedule. I mean, they have, uh, they have, I mean, I don't, I don't even know. I know they, they have the Bears. I think they have the Packers. I think they have the Packers, which are beatable. Now they have three other teams, okay, or well, two other teams, really. So the only ones I could think that they could honestly get lose by, maybe we'll see. Um, I think, you know, they can have a nice fight with the Cowboys. I don't want to depend on that on the Cowboys to for us to have first seed or anything like that. So hopefully it doesn't come into that contention. Um, and they have the Vikings two times, which is a very interesting one. OK, so the Vikings are playing pretty damn good. I don't know if they lost last night. I have to check the score. I didn't really even check from the Sunday night game that they just played. Uh, but, you know, I think the Vikings will be a, a good powerhouse for them to face and, you know, could help us out a little bit. Unless the Lions lose to the Packers or any other team out there that's on their schedule that they overlook and, and that's it. But the Bears literally choked this game away, choked it up 12, 14 points, fourth quarter and totally choked the game away. Just kind of crazy. Um, you know, so first seed, like 
breathing down our necks. I mean, because really, if the Eagles lose on Monday night, then it's, you know, pretty much, I don't know if it's, I don't know what's going on with the conference or it's a tiebreaker or I don't know how that goes really. Um, you know, we'll find out what happens uh, to see what the real lead is. If the Eagles do lose or, you know, if the Eagles win, they're, they're definitely in the lead. But if they lose, then, you know, things get more complicated for the number one seed. And, uh, the Lions need to get beat somehow, some way. A team has got to help out here uh, for this whole entire conference, but we'll see. Now, I, I didn't go over the 49ers game, but they did win. I mean, it was a pretty, you know, they're 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 a good team. You know, they're they're healthy. You know, they got Debo back. Um, you know, they're they're very healthy right now. Christian McCaffrey's running the ball really well. Everything's going pretty pretty good with that team. So obviously another team that's in contention for number one seed, but we'll see down the road. You know, them losing those three games actually really helped when they were dealing with injuries. So last on the list that I was kind of waiting for, Josina Anderson put out a tweet the other day saying, I'm told there's currently an expectation in Pittsburgh that free agent linebacker Miles Jack will be in the building this week rejoining the Steelers pending an unforeseen snag per source. Now, you guys remember the Eagles tried to pick up Anthony Barr this past week, and then he reverted back to the Vikings and signed with them after he visited the Eagles. Jordan Hicks got hurt, so they had an open spot for a starting spot. And that's probably what he was mostly promised from the Vikings, a starting spot more than because the Eagles are using Nicholas Morrow and using Zach Cunningham. Okay, Miles Jack and Zach Cunningham are two free agents that came in Eagles OTAs or Eagles train camp, whatever which one it is. And Miles Jack ended up leaving the team and retiring that he thought his career was done and he was going to look over his other interests outside of football and saying his career was done. You know, once you start signing those one year deals at an early stage in your career, it's not great. It's not going well. And he, and he pretty much lost the love of football. So. He must have came back and, you know, the Eagles, you know, he probably wants to go back to Pittsburgh. Maybe he was promised a starting spot. I have no idea. Surprised how he didn't jump on this unless there was a legit reason why he went to the Steelers for some reason or something that they promised him. I don't know. So he left the Eagles and retired. We signed Zach Cunningham. We signed Nicholas Morrow and obviously N'Kobe Dean was going to be on the roster. So I thought Miles Jack didn't have a bad camp when he was here. Um, wasn't horrible, um, but, you know, needed more work and um, with the Eagles. And this this is what happened, <laughs> unfortunately. I, would, I, well, I looked at this and I was like, what? Are you serious right now? Like, he's coming back after retiring and all that? That's crazy. So it's kind of nuts, man, but it is what it is. Like, the Eagles try to get some depth at linebacker. And I'm just saying, like, I know people are going to say, well, they should, they could have just got Miles Jack again. Yeah, well, what did the Steelers promise him? Because Miles Jack wasn't, you know, Miles Jack was purely going to be a depth piece. So maybe he was promised more playing time with the Steelers, most likely, when he was announcing he was coming back. Or this was a private call or a private intervention uh, with the team, the front office of the Steelers and Miles Jack to kind of get him back on the team and, and do his thing. So um, this could have been something in private that turned to the public eye of things. Um, it's unfortunate. It is what it is. You know, would have been nice to get him back, but couldn't get it done. Um, so that's the news on that. And other than that, guys, pretty much it. That was your news for Sunday. Work counts into the division and the conference for the NFC and the NFC East. Um, and uh, really, everything depends on what the Eagles do. Whether you're watching this video after the Kansas City Eagles game or before, um, it can go either way. And um, just want to kind of go over everything involving first seed NFC East and, um, you know, just going through the mathematical equations of, you know, uh, if the Eagles can make it here and, and the Lions have an easy schedule and a lot of stuff going on with the with the number one seed, it's not done yet. We still got some games to play and the Eagles got to survive another game every single week and hopefully not make it a nail biter. Uh, we'll see. But let me know what you guys think about all the news um, right here. But I'll see you guys on the next one. Shakes up. Follow us. Peace out, guys. Peace.